Hey, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel here. In this video, we're gonna talk about, as you can see via the title and the thumbnail, more AI cloud-based extension type things, uh, in particularly in WordPress and Bricks, uh, using some of the tools that we got here. And this one in particular, I'll leave links to all the other related videos down below because there are a few that kind of run in line with this concept of taking what we have here and expanding uh, you know, the functionality of just like core WordPress, core Bricks, whatever it is, and uh, using AI to help with that because it's something I'm learning a lot about and it's really beneficial. So in this one specifically, I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna explain to you the problem. I'm gonna show you what I did to like make that happen. You know, what the uh, final product was and everything like that. And then we'll kind of go step by step. And again, I wanna, right from the beginning here, I wanna put the disclaimer out there that I'm gonna show you all the steps that I went through, but I am trying to give you um, more of an a mind like a like a frame of mind on how to attack these issues when you have something similar because you're probably not going to do the exact same thing as me every single time. That said, our example, our specific use case, and the thing that I was trying to do today specifically was uh, trying to create. I'm obviously on YouTube a lot, and I'm live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And when somebody comes to my website, I want them to be able to just see like a banner or a you know like a a, a button or a section or a pop up that says, "Hey." Mark is live right now, or hey, I'm live right now, click here and go there. So if somebody comes to my website during those times, they can easily be moved over there. And I wanted that to be dynamic. I didn't want it to be just like, hey, you know, check your clock. If it's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, whatever, on Thursday, then I'm probably live. No, 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 I want it to be dynamic. I want it to call out to the YouTube API. I figured I'd have to do that. And as soon as, if we get something back from the YouTube API, which I'll explain all this, but if we get something back from the YouTube, YouTube, YouTube API, wow, it's a mouthful, the pseudo code, the pseudo mindset of that was, if, if I am live, then show something. If I'm not live, then don't show anything or something like that, right? Or say I'm offline or something. You see this on other platforms, obviously, like on Twitch, like on the main thing, they say, uh, if you're live and if you're not live. Obviously, it's their platform. It's easy. It's baked all in there. But we're in a different environment. We're in WordPress, and I want to do that. So I'm going to show you how I did all of that, and, I'm gonna sh and I can just jump right in here now and kind of give you a kind of a, a walkthrough of a couple of different things that we'll, that we'll end up seeing. Um, there was a couple different variations of where we ended up getting to, and obviously none of this is like going to be styled or anything like that. I'm just testing right here on my website that I'm just about done with. By the time you're watching this, the website will probably be launched. Um, but I just wanted to see like what we could do here. Again, I would probably put this as a pop-up, maybe in a corner or a banner or just like something, like a whole section on a page. We'll talk about that. But um, there's different levels of variation to this too that we'll, that we'll kind of all go through here. So what do you have to do if you wanna try to like do some of this? Uh, if you wanna try to like potentially get anywhere near this, like where would you start? Well, if you don't know how to like, you know, particularly like enable the like uh, an API situation and like integrate that into your WordPress website, then you're probably gonna have to either use some sort of automation tool like a Zapier or like an Active Pieces or something, or you're gonna go, what I did, um, I went over to Claude. So Claude is uh, with Anthropic, a a uh, Anthropic AI, really great. I'm on the pro plan. You can go check it out. I know they have uh, the free plan as well, so maybe you can do some of this stuff with this, but the idea is, where do you start? What do you kind of do? And I'm going to walk you through my process of everything that uh, Claude helped me do and kind of like some of the things that I pieced together on my own. Okay, so I come over to Claude, just like ChatGPT. You can try ChatGPT too, but I'm using a WordPress. I'm using WordPress and Bricks Builder. How do I use the YouTube API to dynamically show when my channel is live? And again, that prompt actually there is a little weak, but we're just trying to get like started there. So it's saying to go set up a YouTube API through the Google Developer Console, create a new project, all that sort of stuff. That part is very straightforward. Just type in like Google Developer Console, come over, like it'll say, you know, like agree to some things, get into here, a project, it's gonna be the first thing to prompt you for. None of that really actually matters. Like you just just pick whatever you want. If you're not gonna be in here like all the time, it's not really that big of a deal. It's gonna give you one section to fill out. You're gonna call it a project and then you have to enable your APIs. This part is kind of important. You come to the API library, I'll leave a link in the description and you just enable the YouTube Data API v3, and then you're able to go in and you're able to create credentials once you do that. So you enable this, you click a button that says create credentials, and then boom, you're good. You have your just an API key, that's all you need. It's literally two clicks. You get your API key, you keep that. You can always 
you know get a new one but like just try to not like show that necessarily all over the place it's not really a big, it's not really a huge deal but just normally good to just keep your api keys relatively uh contained or if you do just get a new one so anyway but you need that okay it's like a long string that's what you need so once you do that then you know we'll be back kind of like to where we can kind of keep talking about some of this stuff because unless you have that you don't have access to any of this data that we need okay so then um, this is why I love Claude is just like, I really appreciate the way that it handles like the code output. There's the artifacts feature kind of here on the side. It's everything's just like really easy to kind of like follow along with. It's kind of like the thing knows, you know what I mean? Like the, the, um, the, the, you know, language model Claude itself, like the algorithm of that, like knows a lot of the stuff and you just kind of like walk it towards and guide it towards where you want it to go. As you'll see here with this, uh, you know, the way that this happened here. So, um, it's gonna tell you to install like this, this like, it's gonna say like a plugin. Now, I ended up doing a plugin in some of the other videos that you might watch that uh, are related to this type of thing that we're doing here, not the same scenario, but the same like process of using Claude to do that, especially specifically in WordPress. I sometimes put things right in the functions PHP uh, section of like your website, like in your theme editor. Uh, for this one, it's actually, I thought it was gonna be difficult to create a plugin. It's really not at all. You literally click this download button on Claude. It gives you a, a PHP file, and then you can just zip that into, you know, compress that file into a zipped folder, and then you go and you upload it like any other plugin in WordPress. So it is extremely straightforward. I didn't think it was. I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna have to do? Am I gonna have to get like a, an editor, like VS Code or something like that? It's really actually not that bad. Um, I'm sure you can do more for sure, but the, what we're trying to do here is literally just like running kind of like a program, like a, just a small PHP script. Um, so it's it's really not that, that big of a deal. Um, but right off the bat, that's not kind of like where I went because I just wanted to understand kind of what was happening here and all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna break it down for you. And then in your case, just do these same types of processes. Uh, and if you want the code that I ended up generating, I will leave that for you as well. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend using that. I would recommend going to something like this and just using the, the mindset of creating this stuff for yourself, specifically for your uh, situation, whatever that is, because it's very straightforward, it's very simple, and it's gonna be custom to you. Okay, so what did this thing? What did this thing take that prompt and and engineer from that? Like, what did it do? Well, it just made it's it said something in here like Bricks doesn't really have like direct API um, access um, since Bricks Builder doesn't have built in YouTube API integration, which makes sense. So what it what it gave to me is if like you if for instance if I took this code, okay, I downloaded it and I and I zipped it and then I uploaded it. What it's gonna do is give me the opportunity to take this short code right here and put it in. Now we all know short codes. We probably dealt with plugins before that deal with short codes, page builders, whatever. We take that short code and we just put it into either a short code element or like a text editor element or whatever. We plop that in somewhere on our website and then boom, something happens right there. Normally, maybe just text or like, you know, some sort of like layout or whatever. This is very basic, so it's just it's just gonna be text. So let me show you at this point from one prompt and two seconds of work, what that would have given you if you did something like that. If we come back over to our main page here, uh, our homepage that we're working on, all I have over here is just a rich, rich text element. Again, this is all in bricks and everything like that. Like it, it actually doesn't even really matter. It, it doesn't matter what, what builder you're in to this point. Like there's not really anything that's happened. You can do short codes in all sorts of builders. Um, so if we get out of uh, the conditions there, Right here, you can see all I did was rich text and I put that in there. Now, the one piece of this is that this is my, my. I think this one's mine. Actually, I'm not even 100% sure. I need to double check again. But all you're doing is you're putting in your YouTube or any, it doesn't even have to be your YouTube channel. It could be any YouTube channel's uh, user. Um, they, they call it like a, uh, like a channel ID is what they call it. And it's really confusing now, honestly, because they've changed it and like we have actual like handles on YouTube now. But anyway, like this is what you know you want. And um, just for fun, let's just do an example. So if you like go to like Joe Rogan's or whoever's, right? And then you go to this tool right here, which is just literally just type in channel ID finder, YouTube channel ID finder. And then you just plop in the actual like name the after the at, and then you cl click convert to channel uh, user ID or whatever. And then you just copy that ID. And again, if it's your channel, you're all, you can see this in your settings. I'm just saying if you wanted to test because the problem that's gonna happen here is you're probably not gonna be live when you're testing. So you might have to go to the live button of uh, YouTube right here. 
I know I'm a little all over the place, but we'll bring it back. So you might have to go to the live button of YouTube and like test on one of these live ones. That's like a great way to actually, you know, see if it's working. So we'll do all of that, but I, I'm just, I know I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but, but to give you an example, I'll just throw this one in here and then we'll know for sure which one we're operating with. We'll come back to all that. We'll just drop this in here. Cool. Okay. So what this means though, what we, what we've just done here is we have embedded a short code right into our into our website here, and all it's gonna all it's gonna output is we're currently live on YouTube or we're not currently live on YouTube. And I'll do the little example right here. So if we are live, if we put in a channel ID that is currently live, then we're gonna see that, and then vice versa when it's not. So let's just go back out here. So you can see now we are not li we are not live right now. Okay. That is because we looked on Joe Rogan's channel. He's obviously not live right now. And we said we are not live right now. Okay, so let me just explain this to you real quick. If I go over to this smooth jazz, uh, if I go to the smooth jazz one right here, okay, I copy this. I'm gonna go through this exactly how you would, okay? If you wanna do a different channel, right? Like you wanna know if your favorite YouTube channel is online or offline. You get this thing, you come over here, you come to this channel ID thing, you convert it, okay? I think we, there we go. And then you take this, this channel ID, you go back into your um, your your short code that we created with Claude. You paste that in there. You update. You come back over here, and now watch. We are not live right now. That was Joe Rogan's channel, okay? And now we are currently live on YouTube because this channel is currently live right here. This is a live video that I'm not going to click on because I don't know any sort of other stuff, copyright or anything like that. But that is live right now. So. That's, it's that simple. And I didn't even have to figure out what conditions to call on that program or anything like that. The YouTube API is so ubiquitous that this that it just it wrote that for me. So that's amazing, right? But now we have an issue. The, the reason we have an issue is because that's like a real good, it's a real great proof of concept, okay? It's a great proof of concept that we can come over here and we have like a little snippet of words that say if we're live or if we're not fundamentally we have solved the problem right like we we've said okay well that that does that works but here's the issue though is like i don't want that like i don't want it to just say that i don't want to have it really be be a short code or anything like that i don't want to deal with any of that what i really want i'm glad that we've got to this point but what i really and you could stop there if you if that's all you need but what i really want is i want more of a like an opportunity to use that information and not just display something Okay, I wanna be able to like dynamically condition something else that I've built to show, like I said earlier, right? Okay, so what did we do there? Well, we went back to Claude, okay? And I said, how do I create a plugin like that? I was talking about like the plugin stuff and everything like that. I realized that you literally just download it and then you zip it and then you upload it, okay? And then if we keep coming down here, da 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 da, what are the other things that I've said? I, I think it has to be zipped because it was, that. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop here for a second. A lot of times, and we'll see this in a second, that a lot of times you have to, again, if you think something is wrong, you have to tell the the AI assistant that it that you think it's wrong. Like if you're pretty sure, like it told me to just download the file or something like that. It didn't say like to compress it or anything. Then you need to tell it. So I was having like a little side conversation, side tangent with it, all this and everything like that. Okay, so so this is where we're at now, right? Okay, so that works. So I'm saying to the thing, that works. Let's try a different variation of it. And again, this these series, these videos are more about the AI piece and like what it what it you know affords you. So I want to make it like abundantly clear. This is the this is how you need to think about this. Okay, regardless of if you're trying to do this YouTube thing or anything else, like you need to think about this stuff like this. You're talking to somebody that has a good amount of knowledge in this space, but you you are trying to get it or them or whatever to do what you want it to do. So let's try to think about a different variation of it. How could I use the API as a dynamic condition, so to speak? Example, if the API says the channel is live, then an element is displayed in Bricks. If not, then the element is not displayed. So let's pop back to Bricks for a second. What I mean is that, uh, let's say like this is a heading here, right? Okay, it doesn't matter what the element is. If you're familiar with Bricks or you're familiar with other page builders, there's a concept of dynamic conditions. All that means is that normally you would just put this heading in here and it would show up 24 seven, 365, like all the time, right? It's always loading that. However, in a lot of cases with dynamic website building in 2024 and beyond, like you are gonna want potentially different things to show up at different times for different reasons based on different conditions. And Bricks has a great way of doing that here in the conditions. You just add a condition, you select your condition, you could do all sorts of different stuff, right? I mean, like you do like weekday, date, time, like based on dynamic data, like all sorts of stuff. I have a ton of other 
things. If you want to get into dynamic data, go watch my series. I'll link it up, wpdynamicdata.co. This is that it's all dynamic data. What we're talking about here is dynamic, but it's not dynamic data in this in the sense of like custom post types and fields and everything like that. But that's a side tangent, but it is important to understand like what we're doing here is very dynamic in nature. So, and specifically in the conditions, right? So how did we achieve this? What did we, like, what, what was next? So I, I asked Claude that question and Claude returned with me, like, definitely we could do that or whatever. And it was at this point that I didn't act, this is another one of those things where like I find out or I like, I figured out something, right? Like, like Claude actually kind of taught me something in a sense um, or taught me to like think about uh, think about this in a different way. So it, it, it generated some more code and, and doing things like conditions. And I was like, oh, wait a second. I can actually create conditions, or Claude can create them for me, conditions in um, in bricks. So if we go back to that for a second, like you can see here, like select a condition, and we have all these different conditions. And I'm thinking, wait a second, like is that is that possible? And then if you do a couple minutes of research, I'll, I'll drop this link in the chat too, you can see that bricks is a great page builder for so many reasons, but one of the reasons is this, is that you it has like an, a conditions API. Um, so basically you can, you can create, it shows you all the stuff about the, the, um, you know, the different uh, conditions that are there, but then you have the element conditions API. So like you can actually create new groups and create new conditions based off of the, the functions and like the actual, like, you know, code that you're writing here. And obviously I don't really know exactly, I kind of know what's going on here, but I don't know enough, probably similar, possibly similar to you to like go and like make this myself and change out all the different things and put it exactly how it is. So this is where we go next. And this is how you use Claude to your advantage or any, or anyone, but this is how you use it. So, so then it gives me something and I realize that that's possible. I find out that, okay, this is totally making sense now. I see the documentation for it and here we go. So then it's going to give me something. And at this point, we are at this point, we're at this situation where I talk about in the other videos, this is where, the, where you really need to guide Claude a little bit more because Bricks is a newer page builder. It's not super new, but I, I think from my experience, Claude specifically does not have what it needs in order to create perfect code for you on the first try. And, but it's very easy because it's kind of like guessing at how to do it. And a lot of this programming, the way that, you know, this is just kind of working here, like, and everything like that and PHP and everything, it's doing a good job, but it's not doing perfectly for the way that Bricks wants it and the way that the API is supposed to, you know, be handled, I guess, so to speak on, on the, uh, on the Bricks side of things. So all you have to do, and I'm not sure where I did it here, but this is pretty much the end of like kind of the interaction, so to speak with Claude here. All you have to do is if you ever try something like this and you're trying to like get Claude or any AI assistant to do what you need to do and the, the result like after you actually take this code and you put it into your website, it's not working. The most likely the reason, at least in Bricksland, is because it doesn't know exactly the syntax and everything like that to, to make these things happen. In that case, all you need to do, hopefully your page builder has decent documentation, literally just go here and copy. I'm not kidding you, this is what I did. I copied all of this stuff, I pasted it into here, and I said, hey, just you like use this documentation that is directly from Bricks and create, like kind of like, like just revise what you have here. And then that immediately works. Like immediately, then you have, then like it just knows. Cause it's like, oh, thanks for providing me the exact instructions. I will more than happily just take this, this doc that we have here and, and then take the information you have and marry the two together. It works brilliantly. It's literally unbelievable how, how good that works. So, and also the one other thing is, Sometimes when you put the link to it, it doesn't perfectly work either. So I really like the idea of just like literally copying, pasting it in here, right here. This is where I did it. Look, you just copy it all in there and then it just spits out like something way better. Um, so yeah, so then it, and you give it the full doc and it works and everything like that. Okay, so once you have all that, right? So like you'd, you'd come into here and this would be like our most recent one, which again, I'll put it in the description, but I would really urge you to do it like this because it's gonna help you do more stuff like this. Um, is you just download the file, it downloads as PHP, you zip it, and then you, again, you go to plugins, you go to add new plugin, you upload the plugin right here, and then what you're gonna see is something like this. If we go back to the bottom here, uh, it just named it for me. So it's YouTube live stats for bricks. You could change out all that sort of stuff. That's all just like from the headers, basically, of the plugin. And then, you know, it's literally by me. I should put, you know, really by Claude, but, um, you know, it's just in there. And then you activate it just like any other plugin. And then if we wanna take a look at it, so um, what that has a, what that has done, all that plugin really has done is two things. One, it still does the thing that we talked about earlier, the little, um, 
uh, what's it called, the little uh, short code. It still has that baked in. You could take that out if you wanted to, whatever. But it has these steps now where it's like step one, step two, step three. And this is adding those conditions and that, that whole conditioning system via the Bricks API into our our builder. So you're, so ultimately what that does is if we come back over here now, okay, and I have it set up kind of in this section. Notice this real quick. When I reload this page right here, we're currently live on YouTube, we're playing around with that, but notice there's no section underneath here, but notice back here in the actual builder, you see a section here. If you're seeing this, I'm live right now. That's because this section is now, um, this section and any other section or any other element can now be conditionally uh, displayed via this this uh, this plugin that we that we've that we've created because there's the way this the way that it has injected these conditions in here. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'll uh, I'll come over here. Okay, so we're on the section right here, and then you can see now that there's all these things right that we just talked about a little a couple minutes ago, right? With all the dynamic data and everything like that. But there's also now a section called YouTube, and there's this, and there's a there's a condition within the YouTube section that says channel live status. And again, I want you to understand we literally created this with the code. I'm not doing anything. Like, like I could change that name to whatever I want. I could change this to whatever I want. I pretty much just left the default stuff because it's smart enough to know, right? But you just click channel live status like you would with any other condition. And then you say is or is not. And I think you could probably do more with this, but I would just say leave it at live because that's like the default thing and that's all you're trying to do here. You could probably say like schedule maybe, or I don't know. I, you know, this is version one of this plugin that I just made with an AI system in, in you know, 20 minutes. So. Um, so you say is or is not, and then you probably want to say is, right? So channel live status is live, then we're going to see this, this section, okay? That's exactly how you'd want it to be, and that's exactly how you'd expect it to work, right? If, if it's live, then you'd see it. Okay, so what do we do then? So right now we're not seeing it, and the reason we're not seeing it is because, let me go back here, the reason we're not seeing it is because the one piece of this that actually would lend itself, and funny enough, Claude tells you that you, you should probably do this, is that somewhere in here, right here, look at this line right here, channel ID equals, and then, you know, random ID that I'm not even sure what channel that is for right now. It says you might want to make this configurable. And what they mean is you could, I could go back into Claude right now and I could say, hey, I want to actually make this channel ID. I don't want to set the channel ID like hard coded right in the the plugin, you know, function. I would much rather like put like a like reference a field. Maybe it could be like a jet engine or an ACF option field, which actually might make a lot of sense. Or it could be somewhere totally else where you set it. it this is just how plugins are made, and I'm I'm learning a lot. Hopefully, you guys are too. If you are, smash the like button. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to find a channel real quick, our other channel possibly, and I'm going to just Put that in here as a hard-coded channel ID, and hopefully it works live. That would be terrific. But I'm pretty sure what I just pasted in there was the um, channel ID for that uh, music uh, channel that we were just looking at that is live. And also, I'm in the plugin editor here, right here. So I'm just like, <laughs> just just cowboy coding this live, I guess, like while it's still on the site. So if I did that right and all this works, then that channel ID, if I am thinking about this code correctly, there's one other place where channel ID is referenced and I don't think it affects the secondary part. Um, I don't think it does, we'll double check here in a second. But if I'm right, then this section will show up now and it does, cool, so beautiful. So again, if you're, the, the, the thesis of all this, hopefully this made sense, again, more of the mind frame thing, if you want like a specific tutorial or something like that, maybe we could do that as well, but I feel like we kind of went through everything but I'm trying to give you guys a lot of information that you can like utilize and actually apply to other circumstances rather than just like follow along. I feel like that is way more empowering, but you guys let me know what you think. Um, but the long and short of it, of this, is that the, 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 the builders and the tools that we have are great right now, but if you wanna extend it with something like Claude, it's just like incredible, like what you can do. Uh, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. The idea here is again, that we're just showing if we're live or not on YouTube, as an example. You can build in conditions, you can build in all sorts of different stuff. You can build in another video, had dynamic tags, you can go watch that one if you want. But all this custom stuff that we're adding, just with like a couple little snippets of code, pot potentially like you know a little custom plugin here or there. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do. And um, yeah, and again, I just like the idea and the concept of making everything as dynamic and as scalable as possible, so I'm not like having to change things like every single time and remember to come in here and like, you know, like, oh, I'm live. I got to come in here and have like a checklist to like turn this on or whatever. I, I don't want to do any of that. So I'd rather just like have the technology work for me, set it up and then work from there. 
If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the chat or in the uh, comments down below. I'd be more than happy to make more content about this type of stuff. If you have other like interesting things you want me to try to check out, I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna be uh, making more content on like kind of like API stuff and just in general because this is the type of stuff that really I feel like ends up moving the needle because it makes your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, so let me know if you guys have anything else. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like and I will talk to you in the next one. See ya.